In this video, we're going to begin proving our main theorem for the shortest path algorithms that we're going to be studying. This theorem is going to begin by defining a useful function that we will use throughout this theorem and some other ones in the future. This function takes two inputs and it returns the length of the shortest path between those two inputs. So here we have Vs and Vi. Assuming that we're always starting at Vs, we'll mostly use this in reference to Vs as we're going through. We're also going to define u to be the set of vertices we have not found yet. So in our pictures that we were doing before, those were the white nodes in our pictures. And because they were the white nodes, we know the starting vertex is not in them. So we're imagining we're partitioning the set into the set of nodes we have found so far and the set of nodes we have not found so far. So just so we can keep this in our heads, u is the undiscovered nodes undiscovered nodes and g dot v minus u is the discovered nodes. And now we are going to choose the greedy edge. There's some words here to describe that. We're going to let v i v j be the edge that minimizes the distance from Vs to Vi plus the weight of that edge. So this is that greedy decision that we're making in our code. So among all of the edges that connect the discovered vertices to the undiscovered vertices. So we're going to make the greedy decision and discover the vertex that minimizes the distance from the ones we know where they are to the ones we have yet to discover and add to our shortest path tree. So. We're going to claim, this theorem claims, that if we make this greedy decision, that the distance from Vs to that newly added vertex, Vj, is in fact going to be minimized by using that edge. So this is saying that our greedy decision in fact finds the minimum length for the shortest path. So in order to prove this, a common way to prove that an equality is true is by proving that it is one side is less than or equal to the other and it is also greater than or equal to the other. Therefore, it have to be equal. Similar to how we show things are in big theta by proving that it is in big O and big omega, it's the exact same thing numerically here. So let's begin our proof. And to begin our proof, we're gonna start by proving that it is less than or equal to. This is actually very easy. So we're gonna let P be the path from Vs to Vi. So this is the shortest path from Vs to Vi. By definition, we know that the length of P must equal the length of the shortest path from Vs to Vi. That was what D was defined to be. Next, we're going to append on the edge Vi, Vj. Define P prime to be P unioned with Vi, Vj, that greedy edge choice. Then the length of P prime is equal to the distance from Vs to Vi plus the weight of that edge we just added, Vi, Vj. And if this is a path from Vs to Vj, it must be larger than or equal to the shortest path. So the distance from Vs to Vj must necessarily be less than or equal to this quantity we just computed because it is the minimum distance and any distance, any path must therefore be larger than or equal to it. So we have that the minimum distance is less than or equal to this arbitrary distance that we computed by making the greedy decision. Of course it is. If we find any path, the minimum has to be less than or equal to any path by definition of the minimum, right? So nice and straightforward there. The other part is maybe not so obvious to prove how it's greater than or equal to. This is where most of the hard work comes in. 
So we're going to define P to be the shortest path, the shortest path from Vs to Vj. So that greedy edge, whatever the ending node was, the node that was in U, Vj was in U, we're going to let P be the shortest path to get there. How we get there, we do not necessarily know, but for sure, because we know that Vi must be in G dot V minus U, and in fact, V dot Vs is in G dot V minus U, we know that Vj is in U, therefore there must be some edge, maybe it's Vi, Vj, there must be at least some edge connecting the nodes we had colored in and discovered thus far to the nodes we have un not discovered. There must be some edge connecting U and G dot V minus U because the de start and the destination are in different sets. There must be at least something connecting them. P must contain an edge V A V B. We don't know if this is the same as V I or V J such that V V A is in G dot V minus U and V B is in U. So it must contain that edge for sure. Now we're going to do some funky bounding. So the length, the length of P, well, it has to be at least as big as however long it takes to get to VA plus the weight from VA to VB. This path connects VS to VA at some point, then VA to VB, and then VB to VJ. That is what this path does. So maybe if we write this down a little bit above here before we compute the length, this path must look something like Vs, a bunch of stuff, then Va, then Vb, then a bunch of stuff, then Vj. That is what this path is. We don't know what those things in the middle are, but we don't necessarily care. So if I was to truncate this path at Vb, that would be a lower bound on the length. So this is greater than or equal to the distance it takes to get from Vs to Va, that's truncating it at Va, plus adding in the edge VAVB. So the weight of VAVB. Because we're truncating the shortest path, it must be at least that big. But we know one other bit of information, one of the hypotheses of our theorem we have yet to use. The hypothesis being that VIVJ minimized this quantity. So by definition, or by assumption, by assumption, VI, VJ minimizes, I'm going to write this in a bit of a funky notation, the distance from VS to V plus the weight of V comma U, where where V is in G dot V minus U and little u is in big U. Let's zoom out so we can see all of that. This edge, by definition, V I V J minimize this quantity where V I is in G dot V minus U and U is in U. The nodes that minimize this are V I and V J. So plugging in V I for V and V J for U minimizes that quantity. Notice that this quantity here, if I substitute VA for V and VB for U, satisfies the conditions we have here. And VI, VJ minimizes that quantity. So, so, the length of P, let's copy paste this so we don't need to copy down too much. It's still greater than or equal to that quantity. And the second quantity is greater than or equal to the distance from V sub S to V I plus the weight 
of vi vj. Why is that the case? Because again, va is the same type of node as vi and vb is the same type of node as vj and this vi vj edge minimized that quantity over all possible edges in the entire graph. So this must be true. And now we're actually done as long as we change our notation, which is the length of P, we already said this before, that's defined to be the distance from VS to VI. And it is therefore greater than or equal to this right hand side that I had over here. Copy, paste. So the distance from VS to V, sorry, the distance from VS to VJ is greater than or equal to this ugly quantity. And if I scroll up, it was also less than or equal to that quantity. Therefore, it must be the same. So that ends our proof. Similar to our big O and big omega proofs, if I show it's in big O and show it's in big omega, it must necessarily be in big theta. The exact same thing here. If it's less than or equal to, and it's greater than or equal to, it must be in fact equal to that quantity. If you were very careful, you may have noticed that we did not actually prove that the code that we wrote in fact satisfies the theorem that we just proved. The problem is in the code, we minimized vk.distance plus the weight of the edge. When we have not proven that that distance is in fact the minimum distance. We prove this by mathematical induction by slowly decreasing the size of the set u, those being the undiscovered vertices. So we're going to perform induction on the iterations of the loop u sub p is going to be whatever u is at the beginning of the pth iteration. And if we're doing induction, we must say what u is at the start, which would be everything but vs. We haven't discovered anything but vs. And therefore, g dot v minus u at the start would be vs. That's what we say here. And conveniently, the distance for vs is just zero, which is obviously the minimum distance. So the base case is very easy. We make our inductive assumption. And then all we need to do is apply the theorem and use our inductive hypothesis. You can go ahead and read through the details if you want, but this is a straightforward induction proof. We literally just write down what the things are and then apply our inductive hypothesis to reduce them to what we want. It is a very straightforward induction proof. Feel free to read through the exact details if you want. All we are doing is replacing vi.distance with the distance from vs to vi for the things that appeared inside of our set up, which is by using our inductive assumption. Other than that, apply shortest path theorem two, and the deed is done.